Hi everyone, we have Star Jones as our special guest, a woman who needs absolutely no introduction. <laughs> And as you have probably noticed, she is in a stunning red dress with beautiful red nails. If you want to show those off, I don't know if you can see the shoes. The shoes are fantastic. Always got to pick up the shoe. The shoe is fantastic. Let me tell you, up close, I hope you're all seeing this on Facebook Live. It's wonderful. Uh, and beautiful red he headband in her gorgeous hair. And this is not a mistake. No, not at all. I wear red for the entire month of February. I mean, every single day from the luggage that I carry, to the pajamas that I wear, to the exercise clothes. Beautiful red bag over there off To camera. the handbag that I carry. My dog has a red dress <laughs> on right now, red bows in her hair, and a little red velvet collar. Everybody goes red in my house for the month of February. Go Red is my passion. It's who I am, it's what I do, um, and it's to bring awareness to heart disease in women. Yeah, and that would be actually great uh, for you to tell us a little bit about the Go Red campaign because if you're like me, viewers, you've heard of it, but you don't know a lot about what it's about, who organizes it, and really, how did you get involved with it? Well, it's very personal for me. Let me just start with why it should be personal to you. Um, heart disease is the number one killer of all women. Let me say that again. Heart disease is the number one killer of all women. It is also the number one killer of African Americans. It is also the number one killer of Americans. I'm three for three. I like to win, but I don't like to win like that. And heart disease came into my life uh, in a very personal way. It'll be seven years next month that I had open heart surgery. And I'm talking the real kind, where they crack your chest and take your heart out of your body. Um, my heart was out of my body for 22 minutes. My heart was stopped for 22 minutes. And the machines kept me alive. Uh, or as my 98-year-old grandmother would say, no, God kept you alive mm -hmm. and figured out what to do with those machines. But right is they put my heart back in and I was able to get my life back through cardiac rehabilitation. I knew that my purpose was defined. I think most people <clears throat> walk around saying they're looking for purpose. I believe that all of our purpose is to serve. Your job is to find out how you can best serve. And I can give voice to something that really impacts on everyone's life. 80% um, of heart disease in America can be prevented by simple lifestyle changes. And so I have dedicated myself for the last seven years to bringing awareness to heart health and making it a priority for people to talk about. It needs to be on the front burner. The Go Red campaign has done that for over a decade. We've saved over 700,000 women's lives, and it gives me great honor to use my voice and my platform to elevate this scourge on America's health um, to a front burner issue. Now, you've spent so much time going around the country speaking on behalf of the campaign and getting to know people uh, who are dealing with these issues. And I was wondering, you had, what have you noticed is the biggest misconception when it comes to, to specifically women and heart disease? Well, most women think that heart disease is an old white dude's disease. Um, you, you visualize an old white guy sitting at Spark Steakhouse um, with a big prime rib and an overstuffed baked potato um, and a bunch of bread drinking a brandy. That's really not the face of heart disease. Yes, it impacts on men that way, but it really can impact on women. I've met so many of what I now refer to as my heart sisters across this country, women of every age, of uh, every in, uh, demographic, meaning they come from all different places, well, women who have uh, model bodies and athletes' bodies, as well as those who are obese. Um, it can happen to anyone. So the biggest misconception is not me. I, I consider myself to be pretty smart, um, and uh, you know I made my living on being the smart one in the room. Uh, but when it came to my own health, I was pretty stupid. Um, I had all the earmarks of someone who could be um, uh, a heart disease um, candidate. Um, for many, many years, I was massively obese. I didn't take care of my health. I didn't make it a priority. Once I started making it a priority and I had weight loss surgery to help kickstart my health campaign, 
I lost 160 pounds, a whole human being, more than you weigh right now, I guarantee you. And I was doing really well. I was playing tennis and I was getting my exercise. I was making good food choices. So I'm thinking to myself, I got it all going on. And then I walked into the hospital and because I was having some weird chest pains and I was overly fatigued. And when I would go from seated to standing too quickly, I would get very lightheaded. Those kinds of things are typical signs in women of heart disease. It's also a typical sign of you're too tired and you're working too hard or you got anxiety. And sometimes hospitals and doctors miss those signs. But I'm pretty in tune. So when I went to the hospital, my doctor put me through a myriad of tests and I was diagnosed with heart disease. And they told me that I had to have open heart surgery to repair my aortic valve. And if I didn't get it, I might need a valve replacement or a new heart down the line. So for all practical purposes, I had elective open heart surgery to save my own life. The surgery gave me my life back, but cardiac rehabilitation afterwards, putting the focus back on health, actually gave me the quality of life. And that's what I celebrate every day. Well, so that's a big question, and you alluded to the fact that being overly stressed, overly tired, all these things that can mask heart disease symptoms are things that many Americans and often many women experience. How, how would you say access to women's own specific care plays into the heart disease problem? Well, one of the biggest issues has to do with heart disease, as I said earlier, is very much preventable. Um, there's some heart disease that is not. That's genetic and it's a part of who you are. Part of my heart disease was actually genetic, um, but then when I added on all of the other uh, layers, that's what made me have the, the heart health issue or crisis. Um, <clears throat> women have to have access to preventive care. What saved my life was the ability to go into the hospital, um, to not as an emergency room. Remember, I didn't have a heart attack. Um, I wasn't one of these people writhing on the floor. That was not my problem. I walked in in six inch Jimmy Choo boots, okay? I, f I rolled in there because I was having some issues, but I never thought I was gonna end up in the hospital. I had lunch plans that day. <laughs> my doctor said, no, sit your behind down. You're gonna be taken to the cath lab. There's some fluid around your heart. I said, excuse me? Next thing you know, I'm laid out on an operating table. They have a big needle. They took a liter of fluid out of my heart. You know what a liter looks like? That's an Evian bottle. They took it out of the sack around my heart on the day that I walked in in Jimmy Choo's. So this is what I'm saying. We have to have access to preventive health care. We have to be able to get diagnosed, especially when it comes to minority women. African-American women die much more frequently from heart disease related issues. You wanna know why? Because we don't have the same access. And that's why making sure that affordable care is available to all women is my priority. You know, and you segued quite perfectly into my next question in that you were very active in campaigning for people to enroll when the Affordable Care Act opened the exchanges what were the main concerns that you noticed? Because you really made a, took great efforts to go around the country speaking to people. What were people's biggest health concerns that you noticed? Well, the biggest concern is not having to treat the emergency room as your local doctor. Well, you know, just if I just give you one example, in the city of New Orleans, it literally can be block to block, the difference in people having access to health care. Um, and the actual mortality rates are impacted by your access to health care. We want to talk about making sure that a, a woman has her woman's wellness visit every year. Now, you know what that means? That means your head doesn't hurt, your leg doesn't hurt, your arm doesn't hurt, you didn't feel a lump, nothing. It's, I'm going to make sure I'm well. Let me go see the doctor. I do it around my birthday every single year because it's my way of saying I'm celebrating a year of life. So usually I'm pretty happy around mm -hmm. my birthday. So the doctors write it down in the codes 
Nothing's wrong with her. She came in here for her wellness visit. Every single one of us is able to do that because of the Affordable Care Act. The fact that that might not be available to women every single year scares the bejeebies out of me. Um, making sure you are evaluated every year um, can stave off if you are a likely candidate for obesity. You can check for diabetes. You can have your annual mammogram. We need to get our eyes checked. We need to get our ears checked. We need to make sure that we are not um, uh, vitamin D or vitamin C deficient. Those are the kinds of things that can lead to cardiovascular disease. And a wellness visit allows a woman to know one more year of life, I'm okay. Now, this is a difficult question to answer and provide specific advice about, but do you have advice for women who are worried that the Affordable Care Act may be repealed and replaced? Well, the first thing is, is we have to be very vigilant in protecting our own interest. Um, we saw recently that women uh, came together and coalesced around the issues of protecting our own rights. Well, your right to health is your most valuable right. I used to think that my law degree was my greatest asset. My health is my greatest asset. Um, I, I say for she who has health has hope, and she who has hope has everything. So health gave me hope, and hope tells me I got everything that I need. So my best advice to women is um, to make sure you talk to your uh, legislators, to reach out, to learn about your own health care, and to be vigilant about it. You have to know your numbers. You have to know what your BMI is. That's your body mass index. You have to know what your cholesterol is. You have to know what your blood pressure is. You have to make sure you don't smoke. Um, I know that a lot of young women uh, find that it's cool and it's a weight loss technique. It's nasty. Don't smoke. Nobody smokes at this time. Come on, y'all. That's just nasty. So I'm telling you, those are some real things that you can do. And let me just put it real, real. Eat less and move more. <laughs> that will help you out. That'll help you out with your health, and um, it'll lead to the best heart health. Uh, I think as a last question, because you have been so generous with your time, but as a fan of The View, I have <laughs> one that is not heart related. I'm sorry, guys. Um, but one that I think about a lot in this political climate, which is that the country feels increasingly polarized. But you on The View, and the women on The View do this great, they handle different political and social views, they come at it from different uh, perspectives and manage to come back together every day or after the next segment and get along. Uh, no, we and, didn't. <laughs> <laughs> or not. Um, you did an excellent job faking it. Um, what is your advice for navigating challenging, controversial discussions and topics? Um, don't be afraid to confront them. Um, I was kidding. Uh, actually, my colleagues from Review, um, I learned more from them and I gained more from them than I will ever be able to repay. Uh, I learned more from Barbara Walters by sitting at her side for nine years than any other uh, woman I've ever worked with or worked for. Um, I always say I've had two great mentors, Johnny Cochran in the law and Barbara Walters when it comes to broadcast television. I was privileged to sit with her and to learn at her knee. She was brilliant in putting together a diverse uh, group of people from different backgrounds and experiences. And it wasn't just about skin color. It was different age groups that we all came from different economic backgrounds. Um, I was Southern. Uh, Joy was a New Yorker. Um, Meredith was from New England. Uh, we, uh, Debbie Madinopoulos' heritage was Greek. I mean, we think about what it's like to put a diverse group of people around the table. And you know, you know, part of my job at the Professional Diversity Network is to highlight diversity and inclusion as a business imperative. Not just as it makes you feel good, but because it moves businesses forward. And you ask me, how do you navigate difficult di discussions and conversations? So you put different people around the table and actually value what they're bringing to the table. 
And we all bring something to the table other than an appetite. We bring an opinion, we bring a position, we bring our own backgrounds and experiences. And as long as you come to that conversation, to that table with a pure place of trying to resolve an issue, there is no bad conversation. If you come with an agenda of anything other than a solution oriented, then that's what makes it difficult. I love having discussions with people that disagree with me. But disagreeing doesn't mean you have to be disagreeable. And that's the climate that we live in right now. Make sure you make the difference. Disagreeing, but not disagreeable. There you go. I think that's probably the best note we could end on. Uh, along with don't smoke. Seriously, don't smoke, guys. Don't smoke. Take care of your heart. And wear red and support. Come on. Uh, thank you to my friends at Macy's. Mm. Um, the Macy's donates um, three dresses. And the proceeds from those dresses every single year, they've been our partner for uh, over a decade right now, um, goes to the American Heart Association. Do you know how many lives have saved? We saved because of some dresses. So shop for a cause. Um, and we get to partner with all kinds of wonderful organizations. Uh, Kendall Miles Designs are doing a percentage of all of the red shoes to the American Heart Association and a number of companies are doing this across the country. So shop red, wear red, and remember this is really about the lives that we're gonna save. Take care of your hearts, everybody.